What should the Mets' everyday lineup look like ideally for the rest of the season? Let's talk about it. Well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watsu K99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. You know, it has become a daily ritual amongst New York Mets fans. The New York Mets post the lineup for the upcoming game that day or that night on social media, and Mets fans, without any hesitation, find something to complain about. Whether it's Daniel Vogelback batting fifth, Mark Vientos not being in the lineup, Pete Alonso not being moved down, Danny Mendick being in, Luis Guillorme being in, Jeff McNeil playing some weird position that he's never played before. It seems like every single Mets fan finds something to complain about with this lineup. But, you know, when you have the same lousy cards in your hand, you, you know, you could put them in whatever hand order in your hand you want to, you're still going to have the same hand in the card game. It doesn't really make that much of a difference unless you change some players on the roster. It has been a very, very inconsistent offense. I'm not going to say the Mets offense has been terrible this year, but it has underachieved. They've done some things well. It has been a mediocre at best offense if I'm being completely, completely objective about it. So with the trade deadline one week away, this franchise needs to make some changes. It is time they sell some of their veterans off or even cut some players because what is the point of watching these fat cats basically waste our time, waste our energy over the remaining two months of what has been a disgusting, brutal, putrid 2023 regular season for the New York Metropolitans. So here's what I would do. I Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you my... Ideal everyday lineup for the Mets. This is the lineup I want to see most often. I'm going to give you the order, and I'm going to give you the position as well, and I'm going to give you some reasons why. Some of this will make sense. Some of this is going to be a little crazy, but I, at this point in the season, why not try something different? So I would lead off with Brandon Nimmo playing center field. Nothing crazy there. You know, I really am impressed with the power that he's shown. He is striking out a little more than I would like, but I still love the speed. I love his ability to work out long at bats. I'm not messing with it. Number two, I would put Starling Marte back in the two hole. Now that he's been on the DL, he's ha having some time to recover from his migraines and other things like that, his other issues. The one thing that Marte is doing well this year is stealing bases. Okay, he's stolen, I believe, 23 bases up until this point. You know, here, here's how I really feel about Marte. If you don't bat him second in that spot, I would actually put him all the way down in the lineup at nine because all he's been doing up to this point, he's been he has been a glorified Billy Hamilton. That is what Strong Marte has been this season. But if he's healthy and he can show some signs that he can hit again, then I really prefer him in the two spot. I like having a one-two punch at the top of the order that has speed. Three, I would leave Francisco Lindor at shortstop. Not much needs to be said there. He's been hitting home runs. He plays every day. You know, the batting average is not great, but he does drive runners in. Now, here's where I get a little bit creative here. I have been really, really disappointed in Pete Alonso this season. I'm not going to tell you he's had a horrible season, but his batting average, as we talked about on a recent video, has plummeted to nearly the, uh, the 200 line. It has been getting worse and worse. He has, I believe, four home runs since he got plunked on the hand on purpose by Charlie Morton. I would move Alonso down in the order. All right, and I would put Francisco Alvarez at cleanup. Even though he's been struggling a little bit with the batting average, you know, he's got a little bit too much of a hitch in his swing, but you know what? He when he gets hot, he really has been carrying the Mets as well as anybody else on this offense. I put Alvarez at cleanup, and at 5, I put Brett Beatty. Now, the thing with Beatty, I want to break up the two righties. I, you know, with my four and five, I like breaking up the, the lefty-righty combination. So I've got Beatty fifth and Alonzo sixth. And Alonzo can move back up to cleanup once he uh, gets his uh, batting average to a somewhat respectable. Can, can he get back to 230? You know, if Alonzo can get back up there, then fine. I'm happy to move him back up. But I want Brett Beatty to get his, a lot of at-bats. 
You know, his strikeout rate has been high. He's been hitting the ball on the ground, but he's 23 years old. He's a good fundamental hitter, as he's shown in every level of baseball that he's ever played. I think Beatty needs a good amount of at-bats, and I want him in the middle of the lineup. I don't want him buried down at the bottom. So I want to go Alvarez 4, Beatty 5, and Alonzo 6. Okay, Alvarez catcher, Beatty at third base, Alonzo at first base. I'm not making Alonzo my regular DH. Seventh, I would put Jeff McNeil. I want the lefty behind Alonzo. I want the contact hitter. Uh, I want to put uh, McNeil in that spot, and I'd play him in left field. Okay, because I got another player in mind to play second base. So McNeil is going to be batting seventh in this spot. And like I've said, I am so disappointed with McNeil's batting average. You know, if he's not hitting 310 or 320, then he's not of much use because he's okay at defense. He's an okay runner. He gives you next to no power whatsoever. It's really all about the batting average. I like Alonzo and McNeil. You know, hitting back to back, I like putting them close together in the lineup, but I would drop them, and I want to give Alvarez and Beatty more of a chance. Then at number eight, I put in Mark Vientos, and I make him my everyday designated hitter. I don't care if the pitcher's lefty, if it's a righty, if he's ambidextrous, if the other team puts a T out there on home plate, give Mark Vientos at bats. Now, this guy might fall flat on his face. There's no doubt about it. I'm not saying this guy is going to be the next great power hitter in baseball, but the Mets have absolutely misused him. He is another player who needs opportunities, and he needs to play every day. And finally, at second base, I would call up Ronnie Mauricio. All right, and I'm going to get into Mauricio in a moment and why I'm putting him at second base. But then on my bench, you have Omar Narvaez as your catcher, Danny Mendick, who is essentially the utility infielder. I'd much rather have Luis Guillorme, but he's not coming back until September. You know, he's got a calf strain. I, I don't want Mendick on this team, but somebody has to be a backup infielder. And then I would, I think Mark Hanna is going to stay as a Met. I don't think he's getting traded. I just don't have that feeling. And personally, I do like DJ Stewart as a pinch hitter off the bench. You know, if you want to spell Vientos against the lefty, put Stewart in there against righties. I'm okay with that. You know, I, I can live with that. Then what I'm also doing, who I'm losing, I'm cutting Daniel Vogel back because I don't even think you can get a batting tee back for him. And I'm trading Tommy Pham. I think Pham, we know he's going to be a free agent after this season. He can hit. He can hit with power. He can throw. He can field. And he gives you some good attitude. He brings some of that team camaraderie in there. And you know what? Why not help another team that maybe could use a right-handed bat? That could use an outfielder. Otherwise, the Mets are just probably going to lose him for nothing after this season. So I would trade Pham. And that opens up the spot, another spot in the lineup. And that's where you can start to plug in uh, a Vientos, for instance, as a right-handed hitter. Okay, now the thing with Mauricio, I want to break him down just a little bit. 22 years old, he's hit three walk-off home runs in the last two weeks. Saturday night, he beat Buffalo with a 440-foot walk-off blast, won the game 8-7 to for Syracuse, clobbering a 3-1 pitch. The exit velocity, if you care about such things, was 113 miles per hour. And for the season, Mauricio has 16 home runs. He's hitting 295, 56 RBIs, and an 851 OPS in AAA. He deserves a chance. Keith Law, one of the most respected baseball writers, has him in his top 30 prospects as of pretty recently. Mauricio deserves a chance to screw up. He really, really does. Now, as far as the position, here's why I'm putting him at second base, okay? Here's his count. For the games he's played this season. 42 games at second base, he's made 9 errors, 952 fielding percentage. Shortstop, 25 games, 6 errors, a 939 fielding percentage, a little bit worse. Left field, forget it, 15 games, 1 error, but an 880 fielding percentage. All right, he has not been, he's not an outfielder. He's a trained shortstop, but he is not going to play that position. To me, it makes sense to put Mauricio at second base, plug him in there for the rest of the season, see what happens. I have more confidence in Mauricio in terms of his natural athleticism than I do a Mark Vientos. If I felt Vientos was a better first baseman than Pete Alonso defensively, I would advocate for DHing Alonso. I'd have no problem with it. I would. Pete might. <laughs> that could be a problem, but you, believe me, I've seen Vientos play in person at third base. When Syracuse came down here to Norf Norfolk and played the Tides, you do not want Vientos playing third base. No, 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 no. No. 
You want him at DH. I would give Mauricio a chance because I think he's athletic enough where he can learn second base. So those are my thoughts on what I would do with this lineup the rest of the way. Let me know your thoughts. Put them down there in the comments. Hey, just to let you know, Wednesday night, I will be doing a live watch along. We're going to come on probably about 9 o'clock. I'm still expecting. I'm going to be out of town, so I'll be doing the show remotely, the live show, Wednesday Night Live with Watch UK 99. So we're going to watch the last part of Mets Yankees together. And I've got some thoughts on the Jets. Three parts of the team I think will surprise some people, and three parts of the team I'm worried could disappoint some people. So come back here, 9 p.m. Eastern, Wednesday night. Check it out, Wednesday Night Live with Watch UK 99. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you right back here with more content from you know where, the Liquor Chair.